This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everyone, welcome back to Equipment World. You're watching The Dirt. I'm your host, Brian, and today I've got a really exciting product for you. This is something that I've recently gotten to spend about a week worth of time actually out in the field with this product, and the reason I wanted to feature it is because it does such a great job for what it is, and it is a super reasonable product to get into. We're gonna be talking about the iDig Indicate Only 2D system. What do I mean by all of that? That's a lot of fancy terminology. Well, indicate only means that the system does not actually interface with the machine. It's not going to control the machine at all. It's only going to indicate where you are in relation to grade. Now, that has some disadvantages, such as you have to be able to really operate the machine. You're going to have to have some finesse. But the bright side is you can get into one of these systems far, far cheaper than a fully integrated machine control system. And that's why I think the system is so effective. But before I go too far down the path of details, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin with iDig. He's actually going to walk us through the iDig system, what it is and how it differentiates itself from its competitors. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance cost? It comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. Well, Kevin, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking your time to explain the iDig system to us. Um, yeah, it's it's really good to have you on. Brian, thank you for having me. Great to be here. So we'll start off super high level and super simple. Uh, can At a very high level, can you explain to us what is the iDig system? So the iDig system is an excavator guidance system, a 2D excavator guidance system. And uh, it utilizes wireless solar charged sensors to give the machine operator um, real-time depth, slope, and reach uh, information in his cab. So a very powerful tool um, for those that are in the, in the dirt world digging with excavators. And so just to kind of remind some of the audience members who aren't super familiar with machine control, uh, when you say 2D, what specifically is that referencing as far as the capabilities of the equipment? So it's a 2D system, meaning that it um, it's a guidance system, meaning that the iDig system gives the operator uh, full control. And 2D, meaning that um, you're not necessarily using a CAD database or a topo model um, or GPS with um, a base station to drive the excavator or control the machine. So uh, the operator with the iDig system is in full control. Gotcha. And so what are some of the, or what is the biggest difference between the iDig system and a more conventional uh, 2D system that you would see on machines? So like I said, uh, with the technology that iDig utilizes for its system are the um, the 2D wireless solar charge sensors. So with that technology, um, you're not really tapping into any hydraulics of the machine. Um, the operator again is in full control. And um, so you're really, uh, it's a, it's a user-friendly system that um, most guys can actually install and calibrate themselves. So that's a big differentiator. So what are some of the limitations? And I think you, you've kind of touched on one there, not tapping into the actual machine. 
Uh, so what does that kind of translate to as far as limitations to the system go? You're not tapping into the machine. So it, some guys see that as a benefit, actually, because they prefer to be in control of the machine. Um, but in some cer certain uh, situations, you may have um, like an operator who has uh, a requirement by a municipality to have some kind of a uh, machine control system that's going to actually stop the machine. So um, you're not going to get that with the IDIG system, obviously, uh, but uh, you're still, as I mentioned, you're still going to get real-time information of where your bucket or your attachment is uh, at any given time. And so I do want to flip that. I, I don't want to have a bias, just what are the negatives? Uh, what are some of the advantages of the system over a conventional system? Where do you really see the benefits of the IDIG system over going with an integrated, you know, Topcon or Trimble system? Well, the nice thing about IDIG is it's a, it's a universal system. So it can be used on any brand of excavator uh, and it can be used on any size excavator. The fact that you use those wireless sensors uh, gives you a lot of latitude as far as uh, what kind of machine it can go on. So that's, that's a huge benefit, uh, not only for the operator, but also for our distribution who are selling the system. Because they don't have to worry about, you know, what type or what brand of machine that they're actually selling to, uh, to include the iDig as an option. So I will say just another advantage that I experienced when we were demoing the system is, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but as long as you have uh, a cigarette lighter or some way to get power into the cab, you should be able to put this on any legacy piece of equipment. So if I had some 1975 old school excavator sitting out in a field, as long as I could get power to the equipment, you could put 2D machine control on this 1975 excavator, correct? Yeah, so <clears throat> it's, it's a huge advantage having those wireless sensors uh, because, as you mentioned, you can transfer the system from one machine to another. So uh, essentially, if you invest, you make the investment in an iDig system, uh, you're setting up one of your machines. But uh, if you're an owner-operator business and let's say you go out and uh, you purchase another machine or another two machines, you can transfer the iDig system from your original machine to um, up to a hundred different machines. And each system can actually load a hundred different attachments uh, into the system. So iDig is compatible with other attachments like tilt buckets, tilt rotators, uh, augers, so you can have a, a plethora of different attachments and have it all assigned to your one iDig system. And as I mentioned, that iDig system can uh, be moved from machine to machine. So I actually have, uh, I brought some show and tell here for you, Brian, but uh, <clears throat> so you can see, this is the uh, one of the sensors and on the back, it has a little sticker, so it's showing this is our boom sensor. But um, yeah, so you have essentially three of those sensors, one on the boom, one on the dipper, one on the bucket, and an additional sensor in the cab uh, with the operator. And those sensors are all talking to each other. As I mentioned, they're solar charged, and they on a full charge, they'll last up to 100 hours. So more than enough juice to get you through a full work week. On a, on a full charge. And as I mentioned, you can transfer those sensors from one machine to another. So uh, each sensor is actually mounted onto a plate. And uh, there's the plate, if you can see that, so. And so I've got, I've got a couple questions that I've just thought of here. Uh, first of all, I did wanna circle back to 100 hours. So uh, ver on one charge, I should specify what I'm talking about. So 100 hours on a charge on your sensor. So really, I, I think one of my primary concerns when we initially started messing with the system was uh, battery life in adverse weather conditions. But with 100 hours worth of battery time, you know, if you've got a night crew running or if you've got, you know, poor site conditions for a week or so, that's, that's still enough battery power that you're gonna be able to use those sensors pretty much to their full capability. Am I, am I correct in that understanding? Yeah, and, and keep in mind that, um, you know, when you're working outdoors, those sensors uh, are solar charged, so they are charging while you're working. So um, you're not worrying about 
uh, tapping into the electrical system of this of the machine. You're not worrying about batteries, uh, having to go out and get some extra batteries. Um, so yeah, it's it's working for you in the background. And as you mentioned, if you were in an environment, let's say you're working in a big warehouse or underneath a roof, and you don't have um, you know direct sunlight coming down on your machine. Uh, that's the nice thing about those sensors that they are so uh, efficient that you're going to get up to 100 hours on a full charge. The other question I had is when it comes to your bracket on your model there. Uh, so if I've got, call it four or five different buckets, which is typical for a typical contractor, um, I'm not having to purchase five separate sensors for those buckets, correct? I'm only having to purchase the bracket, and then when I switch buckets, I can just switch that sensor to whatever bucket I'm using? Yeah, that's correct. So ideally, most guys will put that bucket sensor on their quick link or um, possibly on the dog bone itself, and uh, that allows you to, to keep that bucket sensor above the bucket totally bypass the bucket even. Correct, so it's above the attachment there. And uh, as you mentioned, you could have uh, a number of different attachments and each attachment would have its own calibration uh, relative to that bucket sensor. When it comes to a system like the iDig system, um, what size contractor is really gonna see the biggest benefits from this? Is, is there a kind of a contractor that you guys really kind of go after as, hey, this is gonna be our ideal customer? Or do you see this kind of benefiting the industry as a whole? It definitely benefits the industry as a whole. I will say there, there's no bias or prejudice with iDig uh, when it comes to what kind of machines you can mount it on. So therefore, you could have a small to medium size owner operator type business, uh, or you could have a large contracting uh, firm. Uh, they're all great candidates for this system. Uh, the one thing that's nice about um, the iDig system is it's got a low cost to entry. So basically, our base 2D system runs about $11,000. So wow. at that low cost to entry, um, that's, that's a good um, price point for a lot of small to medium-sized businesses. So that gives them uh, an entry to a 2D guidance system, which essentially... Uh, gives them the capability to have the rod person uh, doing something else, being more productive somewhere else, because the iDig system is essentially taking over uh, all the machine guidance and, or I'm sorry, but the, the bucket information that the rod man is trying to supply. So it's a safety thing. You can get your rod guy away or out of the ditch. Like I said, use him in a more productive manner. Yeah. And so just, just to kind of uh, clarify that just a bit there, because the iDig system is indicate only, you will never have a circumstance where iDig is going to allow you to uh, push a button button in the cab and then have overdig protection. This is only an indicate, it's, it's essentially taking the grade rod out of someone's hands and putting it in the cab of the machine with you, correct? If I'm understanding you correctly, it, it will give you overdig information. So one of the uh, one of the nice things about the system, but it won't physically stop the machine from digging. Correct. That's correct. That's correct. And when you asked what okay. are some of the limitations about the system, that's what I meant. That it will not literally take over the machine and stop it um, within a certain threshold. So the operator again is in full control here. But um, one of the components inside the cab is this guy. And it's very similar to like your laser receiver. And it's, as you can see, it's see-through. And um, so when the operator's in the excavator digging, he's typically looking forward at the bucket to see what he's working on there. But he can have this receiver in his cab, um, giving him kind of real-time grade information. So this is an LED bar and it just lights up uh, to show you when you're above grade, below grade, or on grade. And since it's see-through, it's not really hindering the operator's uh, vision to the bucket. So he can kind of keep this in his periphery as he's doing his work. That ability to know um, whether you're above grade, on grade, or below grade, obviously over digging is a big issue, um, especially if you have to go and, and backfill with material. Um, so having that real-time information, obviously, as I mentioned, uh, kind of takes 
uh, it alleviates the owner operator from having to have a grade person constantly checking. I guess that would actually be a, a question within itself uh, because you touched on it and it's so critical and it's one of the most overlooked aspects of these machine control systems or guidance systems in general is what are you looking at for a payback on a system like this? Because realistically, you are eliminating, not necessarily eliminating a person on the job, but you are able to repurpose that person that was, you know, traditionally standing in the hole holding your grade rod. So having that kind of factored into the equation, do you guys have kind of an estimated payback time on a system like this? There's different variables that factor in, you know, how, how often are you uh, digging, how much are you using the machine, how many hours are you putting in on the system. Um, but I think our marketing information says that the ROI is typically within three months and it, you know, could be a little bit longer or shorter depending on, on uh, your parameters. But uh, for, yeah, to get a return on investment in three months, that's, that's a huge benefit. There's some other things too that you may not uh, know or, or realize right off the marketing material, but just having to eliminate jumping in and out of the cab if you're working by yourself. Uh, so it kind of saves your knees uh, and your back, uh, having to climb in and out of the machine all the time. Uh, you're not burning fuel uh, while you're jumping in and out of that machine. So all that kind of goes away uh, with this system and that factors into your return on investment. After having used the system and spent time with it for the week that I did, uh, in all honesty, my personal opinion, 100% my own opinion, uh, I think the three months is is being very, very conservative. I think you could absolutely get your, your money back within a job, depending on site conditions, what you're doing. But between having someone out of the hole being productive instead of holding the grade rod, between having the overdig uh, indication so that you're not uh, wasting material by accidentally over excavating. There's so many factors. Honestly, I think three months is being very conservative on iDig's point, I, which I totally get being conservative, but just so the users know, or the uh, listeners know, uh, this is a really affordable system to get into and, and the capabilities of the system, quite honestly, really astonished me. So... Um, my, my final question for you is, if contractors are in interested in the iDig system, what's kind of the first starting point of, of where they can go to get additional information or potentially demo a system? So iDig uh, sells through distribution. And um, the best way I would say for um, somebody that's interested in the iDig 2D system would be to go to our website. So iDig-system.com. Uh, and on that website, you can find, uh, you know, an IDIG contact in your region, and that person would be able to point you in the right direction as far as uh, a, a local dealer to go to. Um, I will also say on our website, we have a uh, return on investment calculator. So uh, when I say when I say three months, uh, that's just like you said, that's kind of a general generalization, but you can get more specific depending on your own business parameters and use that calculator to determine if it's the, the right thing for you or not. Well, thank you again for being on, Kevin. This has been really informational. Um, th yeah, this, is, this has been great. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Great uh, channel. I enjoy what you're doing for the trades. Thank you. We'll talk to you here soon. Thank you again to Kevin for being on and taking some time to explain the system to us. Uh, you know, like I said in the intro, this is such a powerful system. You get so much functionality for a very reasonable price. This is a great system if you're especially if you're a small contractor that's not ready to foot the bill for a 30 to 50 to $60,000 machine control system. This is a very easy and affordable way to start going down that road of having machine control, having some sort of grade to indicate in the cab of the machine with you. So I hope this has been helpful. As always, feel free to drop comments and questions down below, and we'll catch you guys on the next episode of The Dirt.